I expect you're already familiar with the tale of Marvin Hemeyer and the now infamous Killdozer, and this video is not really going to be so much about the event and what led to it, but focusing more on the Killdozer from an engineering standpoint. I myself am an engineering student, and I was a part of a tank crew in the military, and most of this video will be based on open source information. Let's start with a quick history. You might be surprised to hear that the idea of slapping armor on a bulldozer is actually quite an old idea. The history of armored bulldozers can be traced back to World War II and cat dozers used at the Battle of Normandy by combat engineers. The goal of dozers such as the Caterpillar D7 one shown was to clear obstacles, fill in bomb craters, and make roads accessible. The armor would provide cover from unexpected gunfire, even though the dozers were operated a little further from the front line, and it could also provide some cover from shrapnel of artillery fire or unexploded ordnance. Armored dozers continue seeing military use for similar tasks to this day. It's likely that Marvin took inspiration from these very dozers, as some of the designs seem very similar to his. The Killdozer was modified from a 40-ton Komatsu D-335A. Basic specifications tell us that it has a turbocharged 18.8-liter SA-6D, 155.4A diesel engine with 410 horsepower at 2,000 revolutions per minute. This dozer has four forward and reverse gears with a maximum speed of 7.9 miles per hour. The D-335A operating weight is almost 98,000 pounds. For anyone confused, that's a very comparable weight to some modern tanks and absolutely dwarfs a Second World War T-34 or Sherman tanks. The height to the top of the cab is 12.5 feet, while the length with blade and width over the tracks is 28.6 feet and 10 feet, respectively. Now, I'm not an earth-moving expert, but from what I could find online, the Komatsu D-355 has a reputation among the people in the business for good reliability, a ton of power, and an easy and light operating feel to it. So let's begin with the modifications Marvin did to it. Let's start with the most obvious being the cabin, more specifically, the armoring of it. Now, Marvin actually did something fairly impressive, as he did not only slap steel sheets on it, but he did make a very simple composite armor. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with this term, it essentially means layered armor, in this case, the steel plating and concrete. The layout he used was two half-inch tool steel plates with 5,000 PSI rated quick concrete between. This armor covered the cabin, engine, and hydraulic lines. The heavy-duty tool steel he used is generally known for its higher-than-average tensile strength, but due to its hardness, it's reasonably brittle and can fracture or spall more easily. I think Marvin was aware of this, though he added the concrete to mitigate the negatives. As we know, the protection was effective, at least against the weapons that were deployed against the killdozer. These include at least armor-piercing bullets from rifle-caliber guns and some kind of explosives. If the first steel plate released any shrapnel from impacts, the concrete probably mitigated this. I've made a video on how he could have made the armor even more effective, but this already did its job perfectly fine, as we know. But with all this concrete and steel, it did undoubtedly add a lot of weight. Some sources say that the finished killdozer weighed around 49 tons. That would be a significant increase to the original weight of 40 tons. And this brings me to another point, that being how did the dozer handle the extra strain from the added weight? We can see from the original videos that the chassis seemed to handle it surprisingly well, including the hydraulic track motors. But the engine could have been a different story because there are clear signs that a cooling hose or something else with coolant was leaking during the rampage. From what I could determine, there is no data on what exactly caused this, but likely it's one of these two. Either the radiator or other cooling system parts sustained damage during the rampage and started leaking, or the engine could not stay cool enough 
due to the restricted airflow to the radiators due to the armor paired with the extra weight it had to haul in the form of all the armor. Either way, both of these issues could have probably been solved if given more thought during the design phase, but Marvin did know it was a one-way trip, so there was probably some let the chips fall where they may thinking. That brings us to the armament of the dozer. We all know that in this mission, the main armament ended up being the dozer blade and its destructive power, and well, the results of that speak for themselves. But the killdozer did have some additional weaponry installed. It had a rear mount for a 50 caliber Barrett M82 anti material rifle, a mount for an FN FNC NATO rifle, and a Ruger Mini 14 rifle, all mounted on different spots. These installations seem like makeshift versions of machine gun mounts used for over a century on various military armored vehicles, the idea being to deliver fire from the safety of the cabin. The visibility and firing arcs probably were not great, especially for the rear Barrett, as the rear-mounted Ripper has been said to block a large portion. But I think it's good to mention that Marvin's primary goal was probably not to eliminate anyone with these guns, but to deter law enforcement from coming close and make it easier to do the destruction. It's safe to say that it did that job well enough. The Killdozer did also have gun ports that Marvin could fire out of if needed, with the 357 Magnum revolver or 9mm Keltec pistol he had on him. He could have made the firepower more impressive, but as said, shooting up the town was not his main goal, but to cause material destruction. After all, his life was the only one lost in the rampage. Being an enclosed shell, Marvin did not have direct visibility outside, and to combat this problem, he did install various cameras that could broadcast him the footage for monitors he has inside, a lot like car's backup cameras, but just all over the vehicle. To protect these external cameras, he had installed clear half-inch thick sheets of bullet-resistant Lexan polycarbonate, enough to protect the cameras from being shot out by local law enforcement. Camera visibility was maintained by using compressed air nozzles positioned to blow away dust from the cameras. All this is quite impressive, taking into account that it was the year 2004, and consumer-grade cameras and monitors were quite different than what we have today, and likely did its job just fine. Now, as we know, the Killdozer did end up stuck after collapsing a basement of a building it was demolishing, but this probably didn't have anything to do with visibility. Rather, Marvin did not expect a basement to give in. To conclude, the design of the Killdozer was quite impressive from an engineering standpoint, and it's clear that Marvin did have more than just some thought about these things. After all, he did do all this alone from scratch. There were some oversights, like I mentioned throughout the video, but then again, this was a one-way trip by a man whose mind was already on the edge. As always, this video was purely for entertainment purposes and is not meant to encourage anyone to partake in illegal activities. Subscribe, like and comment on what flaws you think the Killdozer had.